Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to this week's episode of Graph Guy. Uh, I'm Clark Ritchie. And I'm still the Graph Guy. Uh, so uh, just a couple of little housekeeping notes. Uh, still want to really urge everyone to, to please go ahead and, and, and click the follow button. Uh, you see we've got a, a goal of 20 followers to really help kick this stream off, and uh, help us uh, gather some momentum, and we're well on our way to doing that. So thank you to everyone who's been uh, supporting. And uh, of course, if you're not able to make this live uh, or you have friends who can't make this live, uh, no worries. As always, we're recording this, and this will be available uh, on, our, uh, on our YouTube uh, channel. So um, today, um, in a moment, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Wei Dong Yang. Um, uh, we've known each other for a, a couple of years, and one of the things, as I mentioned before, I really want to do uh, in this space is, is bring in other people uh, in the graph community who are doing cool things or influencing and thinking about graph in new ways. And, uh, Dr. Yang definitely falls uh, into that space. So uh, without any further ado, uh, I bring you, uh, Dr. Uh, yeah, there we go. And... Hey, Clark. Hey, great Thanks to for... see you again. Yeah, great to see you again. Thanks so much for having me, having me here. Oh, it's awesome. You are, you are first, you are our, our inaugural guest, uh, on the street. Yay. So it's... That's amazing. Yeah. Very exciting. Well, very exciting. This is cool. Yeah. Uh, Great. So t tell, uh, obviously, you, you and I have known each other for a couple of years, but why don't, why don't you tell everybody uh, who, who's watching a little bit about your, your background and yourself and, and uh, what you're doing? Well, um, I, I, I actually runs two companies, and the one is Kinabis, which is uh, focused on graph-based, high-dimensional and high-connectivity data visualization and visual an uh, analytics. And the other company I, I have is actually an uh, arts technology uh, nonprofit called Kinetech Arts, where we bring uh, science technology together with uh, mostly dance performance art. And it's a, it's, a, it's a 5013 nonprofit where we organize a lot of uh, performances, uh, event, and annual dance hack where we, we really just jam like 40 engineers and 40 dancers together in <laughs> one place. Give them two days to develop a prototypes, and then they show their prototype at the end of the the, the event. That's fantastic. always been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a really a, a really cool organization. I got a chance to come out and, and, and visit you in that organization a couple of years ago, and since you know, one of the meetings where you were exploring uh, motion capture and, and things, and, and exactly sort of in the context of art. It's yeah, a really fascinating group of eclectic uh, artists and, and, and technologists and so on. So really yeah. interesting uh, group. Definitely urge people to go and, and, and check that out. And where, where, where is this all located? Uh, where, where are you we, at? Yeah, we are located in San Francisco. I and uh, yeah, a our, our company, Kinovis, is actually quite distributed. We have people in North America, uh, Europe, Asia. It's everywhere. Ah, that's awesome. Which, yeah, yeah make, which make it how difficult to arrange the time the whole company can get together. <laughs> no one doubt. of the, yeah, one of the situations you really wish the earth is flat. <laughs> yeah, that would make things a lot easier. <laughs> I uh, know. <laughs> to be clear, yeah. we're not saying the earth is flat for anyone who's listening. That's, that's, <laughs> this, is, this is not that podcast. This is not uh, earth, yeah. not flat. Um, earth. Okay, yeah. So how, how did you get, because you know, I, I know a bit about your back, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and so, tell us about you. About like, how did you get interested in high dimensional graphs and, and visualization of that? Yeah. It's a pretty specialized thing that you were doing. Yeah, that's a, a, a thanks for asking this question. It really, it really goes back to my root and my background, uh, early background. So, so before I went to industry, I was in academia. I was uh, doing research on uh, quantum dots. Oh. And the quantum dots are a really tiny cluster of like hundreds of atoms smashed together, and that behave like uh, um, like atom. So I have a some uh, so called pseudo atom, which form some really interesting electronic structures and uh, have some really interesting behavior. For example, you can use for uh, infrared laser or infrared absorber, uh, like absorb uh, the infrared light from the sun to convert to electricity. 
Um, it can also be used for tagging on the uh, like cancer cells, uh, certain proteins, has a lot of use cases. Now, the thing is, it's really hard to model and analyze the, uh, uh, what you call the electronic and optical properties of uh, such a complex systems. So I constantly deal with uh, high dimensional uh, complex modeling problems at the time. And later on, I went to semiconductor industry and uh, started doing nanometer and sub-nanometer sub scale metrology. And you, you, you all know that nowadays the, uh, the, the chips and the, in the phone or the computer, they go down to five nanometer like width. It's crazy if you think about it, it's a five nanometer width. So wow. one of my invention at the time, uh, so one of the critical problem at the time is like, you have to build the device up layer by layer uh, but in order to have two devices sit on top of each other at the five nanometer size, you need a precision of uh, better than one, one nanometer. Wow. So at the time, the industry standard gave you about four nanometer. You can imagine the best you can get is about 20, 16 nanometer width. Uh, beyond that, you have all the failures of devices. So, so I had the invention that drive the precision down to Anstron, sub Anstron level. Uh, and that's today used in all the fabs in the, in the Samsung, Intel, that's every fab has to use that. But in order to do this kind of work, uh, constantly deal with uh, visualizing, like analyzing complex, like uh, uncertain situations, models that you don't really know what is there? Because there's so many different, so many dimensions, so many data points. And, uh, and really the only way for me to think, think through is by finding a way to visualize those information. And painfully realize there's not a good tools for me to do that at a time. Um, like the, you can have a Python whatever, or Excel have certain visualization capabilities. You have traditional charts, line charts, pie charts, but none of that really is sufficient in when you come to visualize like high dimensional and complex uh, data set yeah, to gain the int interest. You often have to come up with some creative way of looking at the information so you can look from just the right angle to get insight. So that's really the uh, what's prompted me to build uh, Kinevis is to to really like based on the struggling I had when I was in academia and also in the semiconductor industry, and that had the trouble I faced in in visualizing those complex informations. And uh, I'm glad I, I did it. And looking at the, all those tools that we have today, that realize a lot of uh, complex situations can be uh, can be made much more accessible. That's yeah, that's that's fantastic. So you you really saw those uh, graph data structures as a way to, uh, and then a visualization on, on top of that, uh, as a way to take this tremendous amount of complexity you were dealing with it yeah. and really sort of like simplify it so that you could then you know uh, do the research you had to do and, and come to some un understanding of this really complex data, right? Exactly. So that's the fantastic. flexibility. The facts, flexibility in visualize information in non-traditional way is really the key. Uh, the traditional way you have line chart by right. or pie chart or bar chart. And, but just imagine how many dimension information can be encoded. It's, it's quite limited. And very often when we look for associations, we look for clusterings, you're dealing with easily dealing with like a five, six, seven dimension of the data. Yep. Uh, and you're trying to peer through, and that, that's a huge challenge. Now, uh, theoretically, the graph data, the highly connected graph data, is a, uh, uh, I call it uh, ultra high dimensional data, because you can imagine each link is essentially is also a dimension. So, so how do you visualize those information? How do you gain, uh, like, yeah, like, so here's a really good example. Like, uh, Simulating a realistic graph is extremely difficult task even today. Uh, yep. Why? It's really because the graph is ultra high dimensional problem and uh, simulating ultra high dimensional problems, data set is, is quite difficult. Yep, no, it's great. I, I, yeah. Totally, it's great. And, and we'll, we'll see it in a second how you, how you do some, I think. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I yes. love what you you've done with that because we've talked about it a little bit on this on this show before. One of the things I've always loved about Graph, and you and I have talked about, this, is that yeah, you can really make complex problems uh, much more accessible to to people because uh, because of dimensionality, and, and I think because it it does uh, tend to more naturally model uh, a lot of the ways we think about things. Um, yeah, and so it lends itself to that. That's yeah. So what 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 kind of well, uh, before we get into looking at uh, some of the things that we could do in, in your product, what kind of areas are you seeing people turn to graph and, and turn to graph visualization to, to try to solve? I mean, uh, I come from a background uh, in the U.S. In, in intelligence defense space. And so, uh, you know, I know all kinds of things like law enforcement, intelligence applications mm -hmm. and things for that. But what, what are you seeing people uh, using this for? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, the uh, intelligence analysis, law enforcement is really a, uh, a good, uh, well, uh, I think it's, it's I, I see that it's early adopter of the graph technology, uh, just because the information is, um, and you deal, deal with in that field is inherently uh, like, a, uh, like high connectivity is about really, relationship like um how one thing related to the other what phone call a person made to another person and what email the change uh, being 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 sent being sent being or being cc'd being forwarded so this is all relational uh informations and if we're trying to uh, look at it using traditional uh, tools um traditional bi tools uh, you are you find yourself to be extremely limited so that I see that uh, that space is pretty much a natural. Um, they have no choice but to adopt uh, the uh, the graph technology. But more and more uh, in in other spaces, like uh, the graph technology is also being adopted. Like medical field is a, is a big one. Like for example, uh, we we uh, did an example of a so called patient journey uh, or patient treatment journey. Uh, basically, let's say if you have a somebody get the uh, uh, SARS COVID-2, like coronavirus, and uh, what's the symptom the person uh, experienced at the first day one, day two, day three, or what kind of uh, test has done, uh, what kind of result came out, what kind of treatment the person received. So you can mark uh, a person's journey over the time with the symptom and treatment and the result. And then when you look at a group of people, like uh, ideally you can look at uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, and then you can start to see some patterns. And those patterns can be really, really uh, important. And uh, here's a nat lens naturally to, to a graph representation. It's a, it's a large data, high dimensional and, uh, uh, and a graph, uh, graph uh, problem. And being able to visualize it is very important. The other application, naturally, if you look at the family trees uh, genealogy, like you have a, a people might be connected through uh, genetically, and uh, some people may have some um, sequence done. Some people may have sequence done, have a protein uh, analyzed, and then uh, and so this is inherent this large graph problem. And if you can, if you if you know certain like a drug res resistance, a drug e effectiveness, and you can, you can actually really uh, help the pop the population to improve the healthcare qualities. Yeah, right. Healthcare is so, like I said, it's it's all connected, right? And we talk about this, yes. the totality of the patient journey, and 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 right, especially these days, right? You might see yeah. primary care and so many specialists, and you're going to see different providers, and sometimes even different drug stores, and yeah, but you've got to tie all those things in together, right? It's never just yeah. Uh, no illness, no no uh, disease is ever in isolation, right? So it is, it's all how yes. all these things interact. That's it's really complicated, and I know yeah, people in, in the medical field, the pharmaceutical field, they're really struggling to deal with this massive amounts of information. Um, yeah, yeah, though that's a, that's a fantastic area. Well, let's do it. Let's uh, why don't we uh, we'll we'll get me off the screen and we'll give you the full screen. And that way you can yeah. kind of uh, show us uh, some of your product. I'm excited. I, I haven't seen it in a little bit, so I know it's undergone some uh, changes since I last uh, got yeah. a chance to play around with it. I know everyone's going to be really excited to see that. So, yeah. and there we go. Yeah, so if you want to go yeah. ahead and share your screen now, it's all you. Yeah. And we can uh, kind of walk know, us through this a little bit. 
Yeah, maybe I, I think my approach is um, just to um, share with you our blog page. Uh, oh, could you en enable me to sh screen sharing? Oh, my my bad. Let's yeah. see here. So sorry about that. Yeah, uh, no worries. There uh, we go. All right. I don't. But while you do that, I'm I'm try, trying to find a uh, a page that was uh, on yesterday, but I, I could not remember it anymore. <laughs> No so uh, and, uh, let's see. yeah, for those who, you know, who aren't familiar with your tool, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's still a browser-based tool, which I think is really great. Some of the, and you'll see here in a minute some of the visualizations you're able to do, like in a browser, are just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so that's a really Thank nice uh, feature to be yeah. accessible. I have the trouble finding a uh, a, a SARS COVID analysis we have done, and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, done it. I love Why that. I love the example you, you gave with that because, uh, especially yeah. when it first came out, talked with people about that, and, and everyone thought, "Oh, well, you know, link tracing, link tracing, sort of graphics." Like, well, yeah, kind of, but but not not as much as you think. <laughs> Your example about understanding the treatment, so I think, is really so much more relevant uh, and, and interesting than just saying you know contact tracing. So it sounds like you found it. So I'll let you, and you should be able to share yeah. your screen now. There we go. Yes. So, so this is really we look this in this example. You look at the how uh, the COVID uh, virus mutates over the time, and so we got the data from a Nexus string, and uh, basically it, it, it records all the gene sequence down in different places, different part of the world. And um, and so what we did is and because uh, okay well, one of the thing that in order to show high dimension information you need to be able to see high dimensionalities um, basically like the more duration you can have the better now naturally uh, you you if you put the information in three D space you have X Y and Z three dimension uh, to leverage and then you add towards the the size the color the sh um, the shape and that give you some additional assistant uh, dimension so you can leverage to 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 show to see your information so in this in this particular example and so this is actually a live example if you if you look at it the, the data is live wow. um and that's all in the browser we, right again it's all in the browser Fantastic. yes and we actually yeah, we actually embedded uh, this browser into a uh, uh, iframe, uh, so, so you can you can just directly uh, go through. You can look at the uh, certain data, and and you can look at the properties. Like this one was uh, discovering Hebei, uh, Hubei uh, right. province, and it was the node. Yeah, and. So this is a, uh, uh, and we can also see, I, I usually prefer the dark background. Oh, yeah, so that's, that's more like, so, so essentially you can, uh, one of the use cases is you can embed a graphics or sessions and as iframe that you can open up for other people to, uh, to analyze, to, uh, to see your analysis. Now, some of the example you see here is we, uh, we uh, because we know where the, the sequence was analyzed or sequenced, the virus are sequenced and the result. And, uh, and then we know from the, uh, the similarity of the, the gene sequence. Let's see if something has the identical um, like uh, gene, you know, they are the same virus. If right. something has a one, uh, added or two added, you know they're closely related. So that gives you a, a graph of uh, how the virus is spread around the around the world, like uh, where was uh, a virus originated, where it was uh, detected, and also you can visualize the it comes and goes. Like one thing particular interesting in in SARS COVID virus is that new variants come like uh, uh, push away the old variants because uh, the new variants is more transmissible and. Uh, right. You keep on having those like uh, more and more transmissible transmissible uh, virus variants coming up. Like well, early days, we thought original COVID uh, SARS two was very transmissible. Everyone was scared. Then then Alpha was even more transmissible, and we we thought, oh, that's that's bad. And Delta came. Uh, so uh, on and on, and uh, now we have the Omicron. So it's a it's never end. Hopefully, 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 we can take that into under control. Yeah, no. Absolutely. So this is it's great. I mean, yeah. again, I love, I love this right because um, one, 
so so important the topic now right because of, of how exactly uh how these mutations uh, occur how, how they spread and as you know as, as a global society we're working to figure out you know how do we stop this so was like i can look at that map and just to really quickly see um okay uh you know if, if we're getting a lot of uh mutations uh in this particular area uh, maybe that's because, again, we don't have, uh, I, mean, I, I can imagine bringing in um, uh, other data to this graph that shows uh, vaccinations uh, and, and then seeing that as well and helping to pinpoint, like, where do we need to do better work in getting people vaccinated to uh, to reduce the number of uh, uh, mutations that that occur in this as well and then travel. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think this is a uh, this is fantastic, and I do, and I love the fact just looking at that sort of first map you, you've got there, right? There's like you said, there's so much dimensionality. Right? You pulled up those numbers uh, on different points. There's so much data there that's hard to understand and find patterns. But when you, you when I look at it the way you're showing it there, you know, with the human brain, as you know, is really good at visually pulling out patterns. So. Exactly. Uh, right. So with a, with a tool like this, that wow, you can put together, I think it's just, just tremendous. So please, please go on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Clark, you really hit the nail on the head. Uh, uh, really, uh, if you think about the, you, you brought some really good examples, like all those like uh, data, uh, like uh, immunity, uh, like uh, uh, vaccination rate, and uh, even some political like sentiment. Um, or the travel uh, restrictions, uh, what kind of precaution a country has, yeah. and and all those the information. Even when it comes simple vac vaccination rate, if you think about that number, is is also sometimes misleading. Uh, it, it's it's more important to, to look at the age uh, by age group vaccination rate, and when we when we look at the um, uh, COVID-19 like uh, rate of uh, the cases and the severity cases, it's important to look at the by age the distribution and uh, uh, and the by vaccine vaccine like a status distribution. Now you're really looking at the extremely high dimensional data and uh, um, well, some really, really smart people um, potentially can make sense of it and because they are so smart, uh, but I'm not one of them. Uh, for me to make sense of them, I have to be able to see what's going on. And hence the, the ability to, to encode all those um, like uh, high dimensional informations and also the flexibility in choose how to encode them to, to, in, in, uh, to, to visualize them is really, really important uh, to see what's going on. So like, uh, I think I can show examples. So this example is what's traditional way of look at the uh, uh, gene uh, mutation, the virus mu mu mutation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does tell you one very specific angle, perspective of the information. It's important, uh, but beyond that, and uh, if you can overlay that into uh, onto a map and look at the using leverage of three dimensional information and you get a lot more information. And if you overlay other information, yes, that's that's exactly why I think you, you're right on, on the need of a, uh, uh, a strong visualization tools to look into those informations. Yeah, this, this is great. And, yeah. and, and, and I know that this one particular example is just giving us an initial brief glimpse into some of the capabilities that, that you can do. Because uh, I know yeah. there's a lot, you've got you've got a ton of, of different yeah. visualizations and, and charts. So, yeah, yeah, this, this is uh... yeah. So yeah, one of the thing I want to talk about it's, it's it's I think it's still in the medical space. Uh, this is the blog we just uh, published, and really it it's like uh, I think I talked about earlier about how a patient going through step by step, what kind of uh, um, uh, the symptoms or treatment received, what's the result? So for, for this, uh, we re, you leverage a data set uh, uh, by created by Cynthia. Cynthia is like a, a simulation uh, system uh, to simulate a, uh, a, uh, like a set of data. And uh, the simulating this data is really, really hard. Sim a realistic looking data is really hard. Right. So I don't believe the data is very realistic. It's just not just so impossible because we're dealing with high dimensional information. But it's a great, good enough as a demonstration purpose. And I think Neo4j did a great job of uh, doing the uh, first uh, crack at that and visualizing how, uh, look at how do you use graph technology to look at this kind of data. 
Um, so we took the same data. So here's some sort of schema that Neo4j uh, folks uh, developed, and uh, well, and uh, here's some a, 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 a Sankey diagram. Uh, you can look at how the patient going through stages, and we take the same data into uh, GraphXR, and you can look at the per patient so-called patient journey, and you can also look at more abstract per group of patient patient journey and one of the things that um that we are developing that i felt is important is uh, the graph analysis tool so far is often uh, how should i say is a, a toolbox approach like you have a lot of tools you have uh, like algorithms graph algorithms you have uh, uh, you can control the representations, like uh, how you how you color the node, how you color the edge, and you can control ingesting the data or remove the data, and making it so so often. A critical problem is uh, because it's so complex, it, it limits to only some expert can actually perform the analysis. The vast majority can perform some very very basic. Uh, simple tasks when it comes to graph analysis and we want to change that and uh, so what we did is we we developed some sort of a uh, some sort of a notebook systems uh, that as extension of a graph xr is doing beta and but what it allows you to do is allows the expert to go in there and set up some 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 like a uh, 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 input box or buttons and, and set up some like traditional views like a scatter plot and uh, line chart pie chart and they all connect to the data in the graphics are so so then when you give this to, so this allow you to for some certain situations you you come up with a quick uh, dashboard and then you can give it to to, to the ordinary people who does not necessarily have the time and the skill to learn all the complex operation in the you know, dealing with the graph network and they can easily follow through and solve their problems right. and so this is i think yeah go ahead so, okay so like not not only can i you know use this as an analyst to help me better you know see patterns and understand what's happening but i can then create and I capture that data and expose it to people uh, who might not, you know, like I said, who don't have to understand how do I query a graph database or even what is a graph database, but you can expose yeah. it this way and then they can continue to build upon what I've done. That's that's tremendous. Yeah, like we had an example, a case of a, a clinical trial uh, look, uh, locator, like looking for, like let's say you have a new drug come out or you have a new 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 instrument, test instrument come out. And uh, the next thing you need to do before you get F, uh, F, uh, FCC uh, is FCC or is a FA, like Fat and Drug FDA, FDA approval? Yeah. yeah, you need to go through clinical trial. Now, clinical trial is 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 is, is, is very expensive. It's very very timing uh, consuming. That you need to figure out um, which uh, which hospital, which doctor is your right fit, and also you need to find the places where you can have access to uh, to the patients. So uh, to do that, and the big data approach is you. You of course you gather all the information like uh, past clinical trial data, all the medical publications. You get all the data together, so that's the data you can. Uh, it's available out there. But the next step is like you you apply graph analysis and and you look at those informations to identify. Hey, actually for this type of drug, uh, we actually can 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 find out those doctors your best uh, options. Now it's a extremely complex process. Now what we uh, what we did is we just build a dashboard like this, and now an um, automated data uh, collection cleaning process, a build the ETL process pipeline. Now a a person need to find a uh, candidate. They simply need to type in uh, the kind of drug, the kind of symptom they're looking for, and hit enter, and that gave you a graph of uh, relevant doctors. So this is this is what I mean by uh, by like hide the complexity behind the scene and make it really like the graph is super super powerful tool, but that requires uh, requires a lot of uh, uh, strong expertise to use it. But by 
by by the ability to quickly automate those things, you really open up uh, the like make it accessible, this powerful to accessible but to 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 the domain experts. Right, and I think that, that's so who, important. Right, I, mean, I, I as you've heard me talk before that that's a that I, I love to, to to focus on is it's great to have yeah. tools like like graph and so forth that you can do really sophisticated things with with data and, and do it rapidly against you know billions of, of, of nodes and so forth but the the uh group of people who have the knowledge to directly deal with those types of things is very very small uh and they're typically not exactly. the people who are the domain experts like i said in uh, you know, in pharmaceuticals, in medicine, yeah. uh, in health, in, in law enforcement, in fraud. So, uh, you know, people like yourselves who are building tools to uh, take the complexity of, of that low level, you know, data access and loading and manipulation away so that, you know, the experts can focus uh, on doing the analysis that they have to be able to do to solve the problem. And then, especially in your case, to then share that information, right? To share that information in a meaningful exactly. way, because as we learn, you know, as as Arthur uh, Covey famously, you know, demonstrated us and showed us the uh, Challenger disaster. Even if you have the information and you know what the problem is, if you can't communicate yes. that, um, then bad things continue to happen. And so this is, is you know, yes. is, is a great way to not only understand but then communicate that because that's that's really the, yeah. such an important piece. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is really, really, really crucial. And um, I, I, to, I think there's a, another thing that's equally important is uh, where the data is. And uh, um, like uh, so we, we run into a situation that um, like, um, yeah, actually the graph database is, um, is highly desirable. Um, that when, when if you can put the graph data into graph database, it's all, all the good. But uh, when the data gets so big, the sharding of a graph data, uh, I don't know what your, your opinion on this, but I found that sharding of a graph data is to be extremely challenging. Like you yeah. have uh, edges that cross like different, uh, different servers and how do you manage that? Do you replicate or how do you... Right, maybe that, you have to create multiple level graph. Yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, people ask, me about, yeah, and it's, I tell them it's still an academically yeah. unsolved problem, right? You will see some graph databases claiming to do that. But when you really dive in, you, you see exactly those problems, right? Things are broken across servers, and, and you yeah. and you can run into all kinds of, of, of challenges. Uh, so yeah, yeah, terribly hard problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, well, uh, our approach is like really, really like. Um, uh, Make it the make the easy to pull the data from all the different data sources. Um, like for example, like a big query is uh, has a lot of good data. So we build a connect to the big query that um, that you can just send a uh, send send a uh, send a query over there, like a SQL query over there, come back data and being automatically translated into graph. So uh, given that. It, you won't be able to do the multiple hop path, like a lookup kind of thing you can do in graph database. But however, um, if you if you structure your your, your uh, like a strategy uh, uh, carefully, and you can create a uh, assistant graph to 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 hold some like off like often used information, you can leave the rest of data in a big like a database like a big query, which is designed to hold a vast amount of data and you actually have a pretty good solution uh, uh in in that regard yeah no i i, I, yeah, I, I totally yeah. agree a absolutely um and we are we are nearing the end of our time but i want to just take a, yeah. a moment too to, to point out people in because again you gave us a couple of nice quick uh demos and there's so much your tool could do like, as you saw i know you do you have geospatial visualizations uh, yeah. I know, like I can, I can, I can. If I have time series data, them, I, I can, yes. I can kind of play things over time, right? And you do some, yes. Yes. Uh, you do some really stunning things. I think with three dimensional uh, sort of graph plots to to really help you know, sort of plot. And I know there's a better word for them than, than what I'm using, um, but yeah, just just some really uh, amazing. Stuff. Yeah, some of the clustering down below stuff. It's just really great, and it's a beautiful uh, tool a a as well. Um, Thank you. Thank so you. we will definitely uh, we're going to get uh, the link to your website and to your blog uh, up on the Graph Guy site so that uh, people 
uh, can definitely go there and and check it out. Um, but this has been great. I, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time uh, to, uh, to 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 come over and and uh, and chat with us. It gives a little bit of introduction uh, to that. I feel like we could we could go on for another hour or so uh, with no problem. Um, and we'll I think we'll have to you know try to see if we can get some of your time and and, and have you back uh, another time. But I really appreciate having you on board. Thank you so much, Clark, and it's so wonderful to talk to you again. It's a, it's been a while. It has, but definitely. Hopefully, yeah. things getting better. We'll be able to uh, to catch up again uh, soon. Um, yes. Excellent. Well, thank you, yeah. um, and everybody. Um, thank you all for joining me um, again. Uh, please let everybody know. Uh, any thoughts, comments, let us know here. Let us know on Twitter, uh, on the webpage. If they think any other guests you want to see, any questions that you have, any topics you want to hear. Uh, but thanks for joining us. I'm Clark Ritchie, and I'm the Graph Guy.